Yeah, man. Uh, so I'm pretty much I'm born in a small town, uh, Macon, Georgia, and uh, basically I just as an Asian American, as a Korean, I wanted to grow a beard because um, I don't know. It was just training a lot, and everybody was rocking beards, and I noticed that like not a lot of Asians had beards. Yeah. So I just decided, hey, you know what? I'm gonna try and grow this thing out. And uh, I've stumbled upon like a lot of ingredients, and um, and then during this time, I was I was taking entrepreneurship classes, and like while I was growing a beard, I noticed that like there were a ton of people like me trying to grow a beard, and they're all using Rogaine pretty much for their faces, for their beards. It's a it's a pretty big thing, and um, so I was like, man, this is a this is a good opportunity for a business as well as like achieving something I desire. Um, so pretty much three months, I spent every single day, like spending three to four hours reading like scientific studies, like clinical publishings, like uh, anecdotes of people using this ingredient for their hair growth, for their beard growth, etc. And um, so I was like, huh, there's there's a lot of beard. Like I, I understood how beard growth works, and I was like, if I just study the mechanisms of actions for beard growth. And I examine ingredients that kind of can uh, stimulate this growth, and I could just create a cosmetic product filled with these ingredients, and it will actually be effective. So I spent about like thousand dollars, which was a lot of money for me, and uh, it was like all my savings. Spent four months, three, four months uh, working on this product, and then uh, I talked with the FDA, and they basically told me, "Hey, man, this is a drug." You can't just release drugs like this. You have to spend two point five million dollars, and uh, it's gonna take eight years of uh, what's it testing. So I'm like, I just wasted my time. I just like, I was, I was pretty down. But then I was like, um, I had studied so much about, I had understood so much about this community, the market, um, why people want to grow beards, like beard care, beard health, everything like that. And uh, I knew the beard market, beard care market was booming. Like there's a a bunch of competitors and um, so I was like let me just try this even though I don't have a beard let me just like that was a limiting belief for me I was like I can't start a beard business because I don't have a beard nobody's gonna believe me blah blah, blah. and um, I just took my information and I just wrote a bunch of blogs just uh, started with drop shipping um, of course did Shopify <laughs> and um, yeah I found a couple winning products and then I just focused on branding and marketing and Facebook advertising Grew from first month was like four hundred dollars, then it grew to four thousand a month, and uh, overall within thirteen months I think it was about twelve one hundred and twelve thousand dollars. That's so what? That's, that's good. Yeah, when did you start uh, in the very beginning? When around what time of the year was it when you started actual studying like pharmaceutical, like learning about beard beard health and how beards grow and stuff? And what was the time between that and starting Husky and all the beard care? It, it was actually, I think it was like uh, June 2016, or July 2016. Um, so I spent July uh, July to November basically just studying uh, all this stuff. And then when I received news that I couldn't do it, then in November 2016, I launched the huskybeard.com website. And then, um, so it was from New uh, November 2016 to March 2017. Is when I just basically worked on like worked on myself and just educated myself about entrepreneurship, about marketing and stuff, uh, designing the website. And um, so November to March, I just pretty much spent my time reading like advertising. I didn't, and honestly, I think um, for people watching this, I think that's way too long. Like I think you should spend like you should study and research and learn while you're actually taking action instead of like. You know what I mean? Because it takes way too long if you like try and learn everything, then do it. Okay, so you think it's something that could actually be done a lot quicker? Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Okay, that's cool. So, but in the whole gist of things, it was actually quite. A, you think it's quite a long process to well, a to get to a hundred thousand dollar company, but just from learning, a the market as well as you know how how can you make the product actually better? How can you actually make a good product? It's actually quite a long process. Do you think about a year or even more? You think? Uh, for. Making a product, if you want to make a custom product, like, a, um, well, it depends what you mean by making a product. Like, I, um, the route that I took was just first job shipping, and then um, I didn't, 
I did that for a while to test, and then I decided, hey, this product's already selling well, so let me just private label this. Let me just like brand it, so it's like essentially it looks like it's my product. But, so that's what I did. But like, um, but then I started actually making products like uh, that weren't weren't available on the market, like beard oils. So uh, that that took some time. Um, I had to learn. I had to buy competitors' products, and try them out, like yeah. Um, just like study them, like just study the texture, the scents, the packaging, the branding, uh, and, and I, I did all that. I spent like hundred bucks on better products, and I was like, let me let me make it pretty similar to theirs, and then let me just add a little style to it. So uh, it took maybe maybe a month learning it. I think maybe maybe like two weeks actually. Yeah. Did you ever did you ever try um, your you know your first round of beer products? Did you ever have like your friends who maybe you had some friends who had, who had like really big beards, did you have them like test it out for you and stuff? Yeah, it's funny, like um, I actually didn't, I don't have that many like huge bearded friends, but like uh, I remember I would just go to bars and just like, um, cause there's a lot of big guys at bars. And then I went to like Chipotle this one time and uh, this guy, he was incredibly like nice guy, he was like charismatic and I was like, hey man, uh, and he had a beard, so I was like, hey man, uh, I'm actually making this, I was like, do you use beard oil? And he's like, yeah, man, I use beard oil. And I was like, man, just, hey, I'll let you try this, man. I'll give it to you for free. And, um, and he liked it, but he said it was like so strong. I, I gave it to one of my other friends and like, this was like the beginning days. So he put it on and he had to shave off his beard. It irritated his skin so much. And okay, so what, so just outside of specifically on Husky and, and starting out with the beard products, were there other some kind of hard truths you learn um, as a young entrepreneur that you kind of learned in the beginning, just kind of outside of specifically the beard stuff? Maybe it was something like you you probably if you could go back you would change or something like that. Uh, it's to it's to really I think it's character development. Like I don't think you're the same person from before you start a business to after you start a business, and uh, undergoing that like process of character development and behavioral changes and like psychological changes as well like it's uh, I think it's overlooked and um, and I think a lot of people were like very optimistic they like they're like uh, man I can start this successful business I'm gonna like get so many sales and stuff maybe they don't actually really want it like you have to sacrifice a lot um, for instance with me like when I started my business well, when I started in, in that business before I started Husky Beard uh, and, and starting Husky Beard, like, I had to sacrifice, um, like, hanging out with a lot of my friends, going to parties, like, uh, and pretty much just focus on learning and entrepreneurship, and, and it's very, like, lonely, you know, it's, like, nobody's going to do that for you, you have to do it yourself in your room, um, and so, yeah, that's the number one thing, I guess, like, what are you willing to sacrifice, and, uh, and how long are you willing to keep going, I guess? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did you have any, maybe not mentors, but any inspiration from certain, uh, I don't know, higher level entrepreneurs? Like one for me is Gary Vaynerchuk. He's obviously a huge influence on lots of people. I don't know if you're into him, um, but is there, yeah, <laughs> is there anybody else in particular that um, kind of, you know, motivated you to get going? Yeah, like um, this was like a while back, like 2014, Casey Neistat, before he got like extremely huge. Um, I just watched his videos and like uh, he, he, he just has so much work ethic and like he's just so inspirational and like he, he made me buy a journal and like kind of face my fears and start being more spontaneous things. So like I guess that was my first influence, major influence psychologically. And then um, before I kind of like uh, bought into the character of being an entrepreneur, I, I was Gary V, uh, like Tony Robbins. Um, you know, you know, like those YouTube videos, like those motivational like videos where they have speakers and epic music. I watched a bunch of those, um, and then I read a lot of books, uh, definitely a lot of entrepreneurial books. And um, so I, I guess I would say like top five, maybe uh, Tim Ferriss, Tony Robbins, um, Casey Neistat, probably uh, Gary Vee, definitely, and. Maybe not so much as inspiration, but a YouTuber whose name is Franklin Hatchet. Okay, cool. I haven't quite heard of him. I'll have to check him out. Um, is there any? Is there anything you're doing? So right now, you you've obviously you've had your success with Husky Beard. Is there is there anything you're doing right now 
that's kind of your are you kind of in between because you're starting a new thing now, I'm, I'm guessing. Is there anything you're doing right now in between to help yourself grow personally? Um, maybe something, maybe you started yoga or uh, maybe you're, you're reading a new book or something. Is there anything you're doing right now that's helping you grow? Uh, definitely. Like my goal before I started this business was to move out of my parents' house and actually buy them a vacation and uh, spend like 10000 on my family. So that was like one of the biggest things I wanted to do. Um, and then I'm going to move in to my new house like three days. So that's one thing that's like going to be a huge shift for me. Like, cause I live in a very small, um, pretty dangerous city. It's uh, pretty poor. It's pretty, I don't know. It, I mean, maybe it's not that bad, but like, I just, I don't really feel like I'm thriving here and not a lot of opportunity here. So I'm going to move to Atlanta, Atlanta, Georgia. And uh, three days, so I think that's going to be a huge change in my lifestyle. Like, because there's going to be so much to do, so many. Like, when I go in that city, like, I see people dressed up in suits, just like people staying tall, like, and people are so busy, and like, I just, I just love that, like, the speed and like the hustle, and uh, mm-hmm. so that that one, and then I guess um, some more, I guess just working on myself, like, because when I started from scratch. I had to pretty much suffocate myself and just like just do work but now that I have a little bit more freedom a little bit more money like I'm gonna definitely like treat myself a little bit more um, and uh, yeah and I'm gonna relax a little bit more too like play video games and uh, cool do you, well do you have any uh, do you have any advice um, I guess just to kind of cap things off here do you have any advice for any any young entrepreneurs maybe they're 18 19 or even someone older who's like 28 29 you have any advice for anybody getting started with uh, maybe it's drop shipping or whatever it may be, anything uh, business related? I would say the more you grow as a person, the more likelihood of things going your way is is uh, it, it goes up like crazy. Like, um, and the way you can grow is like to surround yourself. I mean, it's so cliche, but to surround yourself with people you really enjoy and you really aspire to be like. And I found this to be true with YouTubers as well, like, because um, when I was doing when I was doing my business, like, I wasn't very social. Like, I didn't go out Friday nights, Saturday nights. I, my all my friends lived in uh, Atlanta, which I had lived in, but in order to start the business and have more money, I was like, let me just move back to my parents' house where I had no friends, no social life, no dating life, whatever. I just like live in my parents' house, and um, the people I would be with would be my family and would be the YouTubers. Like I just keep watching them. It's like almost like changing me psychologically. So I would just say like um, stop hanging out with people like you generally just don't like or just generally don't think that they're good for you. And um, really convince yourself that like you can actually do whatever it is you want to do. Like it's so crazy how I mean, like, I don't want to seem like I'm on a pedestal and be arrogant, but, like, it seems like most people don't realize that, and most people don't, like, persuade you to do that, so you have to do that, a lot of that on yourself. You have to motivate yourself, you have to believe in yourself, and uh, put yourself first a lot of times before other people. So. Very true, man. Hey, that's great advice. Um, Paul, I just want to thank you very much for taking this time to, you know, answer my questions and share your story and stuff. Um, do you want to, yeah, do you want to give, uh, give a little shout out to one of your, one of your sites or, or one of your socials for people to check out? Yeah, sure. Um, so since I've like pretty much done this all by myself, uh, grew from zero to 112,000 and to be transparent, uh, it's $49,500 net profit. I know a lot of people say revenue, so 50,000 about that net profit. Um, I did that all by myself, learning it, testing things, losing money, wasting money, and things I shouldn't have. And uh, I think, I mean, a lot of people say this, but I think it's very true to find somebody, find a mentor, like a personal mentor, as opposed to like, I don't know, maybe a Shopify course. Like, I do buy Shopify courses and I do recommend some of them, but with those, you don't have that ongoing support. And I would, I would suggest, um, you know, finding a mentor. And uh, to anybody who's interested, uh, my website is ecomswift.com, um, and I'm providing one-on-one mentorship. It's a monthly thing, or consultation. Uh, so it's ecomswift.com, um, and my Instagram is uh, at the letter I, the letter M, Paul Lee. I'm Paul Lee, so uh, you can follow that. And uh, I also have a YouTube channel, ecomswift. 
and uh, yeah, I guess that's it for shoutouts. Cool, man. Hey, thank you so much, dude, for uh, for tuning in here. I really appreciate it. Mm-hmm.